so we're leaving. So that is why this attracted and this actually made angry, uh, uh, angry the Ottoman authorities. And so uh, the, this, they said that uh, the, the, in this area, the foreigners were doing this hunting many times. And even the uh, inhabitants of that area complained about many times. And they said that uh, there were cases that these Franks killed the animals. And even uh, they were shooting in the streets. Children and women escaped not to be wounded or killed by them. So this, uh, when this, uh, he hunted and he wounded this child, uh, people, uh, uh, the people came and to help the uh, children, and then they had beaten Churchill. Uh, the, the, after they beaten, the policeman came and what the church, uh, what uh, Churchill tried to do to bribe them. But this did not work. Then Churchill began to threaten them that they cannot touch him because he's a foreigner. Actually, uh, this also did not work. What has been done, he was put into prison. And this prison also caused trouble. His, uh, his, this incident, which is called as uh, Churchill Affair, and his stay in prison created tension between the British and the Ottoman diplomats. Uh, and this also caused uh, uh, tension among the Ottoman diplomats as well. So uh, Churchill stayed in prison until 12th May. And this event happened on 8th May, 1836. And he was kept in uh, prison until 12th May, 1836. In this time, in these four days, the British and Ottoman diplomats were busy to release him. And so, but uh, in the meantime, the other ambassadors in Istanbul involved in this, in this uh, uh, imprisonment, and they said that the Ottomans did not have right, do not have right to imprison a foreigner who had capitulationary rights, etc. So, but anyway, the problem was solved and Churchill was released. Um, but uh, before and the, the before Churchill was released, the foreign minister of the Ottoman Empire, Reis Efendi, Akif Pasha, Mehmet Akif Pasha, was okay uh, fired. Actually, it was he who offered to okay, <coughs> resign uh, to solve the problem between the Ottoman and the, uh, uh, the, the British diplomats. But what has been done, uh, the, the Sultan said that since he, doesn't ha he did not have Mushir title, <coughs> and uh, so he can't uh, continue with this job, so uh, accept, him, uh, uh, accept his letter for uh, a resignation. And then another person was brought to this uh, post. And uh, this was Hüsrev Pasha. But um, about this, uh, during this time, uh, there was the correspondences between a uh, British ambassador in Istanbul and London uh, full of uh, uh, details and full of complaints about the Ottoman authorities. But and these, these correspondences uh, was, uh, as I said, that complaints, but at the same time, full of angerness towards the Ottoman authorities, especially Mehmet Akif Pasha and the Ahmed Pasha, of, uh, the Kaptan Pasha, and the other uh, uh, Ottoman uh, uh, statesmen. So already, the Ottoman, Britain and Ottoman Empire already was coming to a position that they, uh, they, they came to a position that they said no to each other. And always, the, the, this tension was already creating a problem, maybe it, ends, uh, up, uh, the, <coughs> it may end up with war. And it had trouble some time because Russia already was rivaling uh, 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 French, British, Austri Austrian, Austrian, uh, 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 um, the effect 
uh, in the Ottoman Empire. So um, this was uh, when uh, Churchill was released. The Ottoman authorities compensated him with a decoration medal, uh, a decorated medal, and also uh, uh, compensated him with a, a privilege of exporting uh, olive uh, oil. In the sources, it was said that Churchill asked uh, uh, for a permission, uh, for a privilege to publish a newspaper, but in the early documents, I couldn't see his claim to publish a newspaper in 1836. But this claim was done in 1840. In May 1840, he asked to the Ottoman authorities to publish a Turkish <coughs> newspaper. <laughs> the interesting thing is that whether I mean he did not whether he had uh, journalism or newspaper publishing ex experience or not, he decided to publish a Turkish newspaper, and this Turkish newspaper was published on uh, uh, the 31st July 1840. Um, the government subvented this newspaper. This newspaper was supposed to be a private newspaper because all expenditures uh, be belong to the uh, belong to William Osworthy Churchill. But the Ottoman government also subvented uh, uh, this uh, paper. In the Ottoman documents, we see that in different times, the Ottoman government, uh, uh, let's say the Sultan. Uh, 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 subvented this paper and gave money to uh, William Churchill. Uh, for example, uh, uh, in 1840 he had 5,000 kurush salary from state treasury. And this salary was given, and so the, when we say salary, monthly, they were paid monthly. And okay, it must be, it's supposed to be a private paper, but the government supported, uh, supplemented this paper uh, for a long time. And even at the beginning, uh, uh, the, when this paper uh, published from 1842 to 1843, because of financial problems, it just stopped. Because in the, in the documents, we see that William Churchill asked the authorities to support uh, subscribers uh, to find more subscribers. Uh, at the beginning, it was about 150 subscribers, and Churchill asked them to increase to 300. Um, but at the beginning, it has financial problems and problems of finding subscribers, readers, etc., because it was published in the form of uh, in the form of official newspaper. And uh, this is the first issue, uh, uh, first number of uh, uh, the JVD Havadis. And so this paper was published in the form of, as I said, that official newspaper. Uh, it has three, uh, it has three uh, uh, sections, uh, three parts. One is about the interior news. The other one was about the uh, foreign news. And the, the third one, belong to the advertisements named Ilana. The interior, about the interior internal news uh, uh, called as Havadisi uh, Dahiliye, the about the foreign news called as Havadisi Ejneviye, and the advertisements called as Ilana. And sorry about it, it's not uh, clear so much. This was a small paper, um, the size of 42, uh, 50 uh, uh, size. And this paper uh, 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 had four pages, uh, four pages. Only you can see uh, the, the publication date and number of issue on the uh, paper. For a long time, the dates were not, uh, did not appear on the newspaper. It was like an official bulletin, uh, 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 so that's why uh, the same tone, uh, the same language, so like you know, court language used in the official newspaper Takvimi uh, Bekaye. But later, this tone was given up, and this court language was given up, and a simple language began to be used 
which made it easier for the readers to understand. Uh, to understand. And what is interesting with uh, uh, this paper, Jeridea Havadis, was that it published uh, Tari uh, news, and it published uh, advertisements, and it published also interesting uh, uh, information, knowledge which made life easier about the pills, about the new inventions in, new, uh, in Europe, and for example, maps, it published maps. And so um, you can see different details and uh, we can say that news for different tastes of the readers. And this uh, became available uh, after uh, 18 uh, 40 years. One thing is interesting about this Jeridei Havadis was that it uh, published suppl supplements, and the supplements appeared as Ruznamé. And the supplements, interestingly, appeared, the first supplement appeared in 1840 when there was a problem between Ottoman Empire and Mehmet Ali Pasha. Later, the supplements appeared during the management of Alfred Black Churchill because William Nosworthy Churchill died on uh, uh, the, the uh, died in 1840, and so after he died, Alfred Black Churchill, his son, okay, uh, took the management of this uh, paper. Um, this with Alfred Churchill uh, running uh, Jeridei Havadis became a family business and continued until 1887, 1887. And then we see that the, the, the publication stopped and then different proprietors, Turkish ones, uh, continued publication of this uh, uh, paper. And uh, in this, uh, the, the Jeridei Havadis, what makes the Jeridei Havadis is, uh, interesting was that not only it supplements, but of uh, the news and the staff who contributed to this uh, newspaper. Actually, after 1864, Jeridei Havadis was replaced by Ruzname, the supplement, and supplement's name was given to the newspaper and began to be called as Ruzname Jeridei Havadis. And so uh, this was done during Alfred uh, Black Churchill's time. So, important man of letters of the time contributed to this newspaper, both to Jeridei Havadis and also to Ruzname. And so they did their apprenticeship in this newspaper. So uh, this, this, this paper, uh, uh, with the news, internal news, foreign news translated ones, and also advertisements, uh, continued for a long time, and it was started as an, as, with an initiator taken by a Lamartine, uh, William Nosworthy Churchill. Um, this paper, as I said, that uh, contributed uh, and became an, uh, a place where this uh, important man of letters that their apprenticeship in the, uh, uh, the on journalism in this paper. And so, um, running a family business 47 years was very important. Uh, I did not have time to go into the details how the other Turkish proprietors uh, continued uh, how they run this paper. But one thing I can tell that uh, this paper, because it was subvented by the government, and though it must uh, be, uh, it must uh, have been a private paper. It was supported, subvented by the government. That's why it's usually remembered as semi-official newspaper because most of the time the government uh, supported financially this paper by giving official news and advertisement to be published in this paper. Then they paid for that. And book publication, the official textbook publication, map publication, importation, and all these were given to this family, to support this family. And they had the, the Ottoman government did this to Alfred uh, uh, Black's family, and they did this to the 
William Nosworthy Churchill's family as well. So these were important. And of course, family members, uh, Henry Adrian Churchill uh, served as the Ottoman representative in Bosnia. And there was uh, William uh, Sidney, uh, Alfred Black's Churchill, and also he served as army officer in the British army. And anyway, so this, this family, this Churchill, started uh, journalism, uh, started uh, newspaper publishing in the empire, and it is not clear that he, whether he knows Turkish well or not, but it was the Turkish staff, uh, staff who ran this paper very well and contributed a lot uh, to the development of the uh, Turkish uh, press in the empire. Well, these are the things that I can share. Thank you so much for your patience. Thank you very much, Professor Celik, for your fascinating and educative story of uh, this uh, newspaper. And uh, normally we have run out of time, but I would like to suggest you, if you are uh, with me, to take a few minutes uh, for some questions and answers. <laughs> Three or four minutes, so for some questions, uh, uh, I would like to give the floor to you, all of you. And uh, if, if you have any questions, uh, of course, if you, <laughs> of course, here. Uh, a, question for, a question for Dr. Simon. Did the artists who were, I think, principally of Italian origin, perhaps entirely of Italian, Italian origin, whom you highlighted today, did they leave a legacy, not simply in their paintings, but in students or followers who created art, <coughs> excuse me, art works very much, <coughs> very much in their, <coughs> I'm so sorry, my voice is gone. Did they have any followers um, who, who also, whose works are also visible in those said collections? Or were they there, gone, just their works and no legacy? Uh, thank you for your question. Uh, <coughs> as far as their works are concerned, we know that most of these works are in either private collections or museums. They're being uh, preserved uh, and highly appreciated at the moment. But as far as students are concerned, we do not have much information. I personally do not have much information. If you permit, I can ask my colleague if uh, she can answer. We haven't made that research about their students, but we know we could follow most of their works. And we know, if you had noticed, there were small notes underneath where in the collections where they are mm. preserved and kept at the moment and displayed at the moment. I have a follow-up question. I can ask also for you. Yes. Uh, just for <coughs> to hear that as well. So you, you just identify these as Orientalist uh, painters, and uh, but we know that the kind of Ottoman context is quite exceptional you know, colonial uh, history, because uh, the Sultan, for instance, was very savvy at manipulating the images in India, etc., and painting. So what I'm curious to know is the um, representation in uh, the international phase, for example, Vienna, mm -hmm. or what you would call more kind of Ottoman artists, and how it develops, and how the fairs different and who's represented and how it's a dynamics of uh, an emerging uh, kind of um, style and kind of in opposition to Orientalism and emerges. Can I ask one question? Can you just... Yeah. Yeah. I can raise my voice. It's just, to be may, maybe more radical and, and, uh, and to rephrase Alberto's question, why should we take these paintings as more reliable, as more reflecting of current reality than what, than what we think of classical Orientalism? Or actually, can you be more elaborate about your distinction between these guys and weren't these, they, they weren't Orientalists? Uh, I mean, I'm not talking about the harm and, okay, about these fantasies, but I mean, talking about the rest of what we call Orientalist art. 
any other questions maybe we could gather is uh, one of our uh, one of our questions and, uh, coffee. Yeah, coffee and then it's coffee okay of course <laughs> Well, thank you for this question. Uh, we, well, due to time constraints again, we could I, we could um, put down only one sentence uh, in the conclusion, uh, in order to be able to differentiate between. And it wasn't enough. I know it wasn't sufficient. I wish we had more time. And thank you for these questions. Of course, these painters were these artists were also Orientalists. But as you well. It's, this will take my, <laughs> much longer time to explain, just like Osman Hamdi Bey. Osman Hamdi Bey was also an Orientalist. But uh, in order to be able to differentiate, in my opinion, an Orientalist painter and, and other Orientalists like the Levantines and Osman Hamdi Bey, uh, the uh, Western, what I try to uh, call Western Orientalists, were more focused on sometimes uh, imaginary scenes, uh, and they tried to emphasize the poverty, the wretchedness uh, with documentary realism. Osman Hamdeve also used documentary realism, but he was more, uh, he didn't portray, he didn't depict the poverty and wretchedness. So he was more realistic, and we tried to, in our opinion, these Levantine painters, what we call Levantine painters, who lived here, who lived here quite some time, and most of them were buried here, they uh, tried to portray more realistic, just like uh, Osman Hamdi Bey. So this is what we had tried to put forward. Uh, it wasn't like the uh, snake charmer of uh, Jérôme, for instance, or one painting of De La Croix. Uh, so these are more realistic or ang perhaps this is what we uh, thought we should emphasize but i know once again excuse me for the time constraints we had to very uh, shortly sum up uh, but thank you very much again for this uh, question for giving me the opportunity to explain if i could i would like to congratulate uh, once again all the participants and thank you for your attention